Have you been suffering from gas? Then get down with the sands and get ill with skin acquisition syndrome. Welcome to Skill Acquisition Syndrome, Episode 1. We're starting out with the very basics today. We're starting out with raw sound. What is sound? What are sound waves? When we hear a sound, what we're really experiencing is vibrating air. These vibrations travel through air molecules until they reach our ears and we perceive them tonally as sound. Essentially, sound is an energy wave moving through the air. As the sound wave moves farther away from its source, the vibration becomes less intense and the sound gets quieter. So what makes this sound? Well, initially, it's an oscillator. An oscillator and a synthesizer is the same as a vibration. An oscillating sine wave travels up and down. That sinusoidal pattern governs our modern world today. Everything revolves around the rhythm of the oscillator. Our heartbeats are oscillations. I like to say that when you're learning synthesis, it's best to start with the oscillator, then move on to the envelopes and filters. And once you've got a grasp on the envelopes and filters, then move on to the LFO and effects and all the deep modulation capabilities. Sort of like learning how to crawl before you run. I've seen people who are new to synthesis jump right in and start tweaking knobs and then they start scratching their head wondering why the, they're, they're not affecting the sound the way they expect it to. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say you're starting with the amp envelope on a synthesizer, okay, which is where you should start, in my opinion. Let's say you have the sustain cranked all the way up, and you're turning the decay knob, and you're wondering, why isn't anything happening? Is the synth broke? No, it's not broke. The decay parameter will have no effect or change on the sound if the sustain is cranked all the way up because there's nowhere, there's no dynamic, there's nowhere for the parameter to move to. The attack stage of your envelope is the very beginning. That's what triggers the sound. If you have zero attack time, the trigger of the sound is instant, like a clap or a snare hit on a drum. The longer your attack time, the more the volume has to swell up to its peak. Think of uh, an orchestra string section that starts very quiet and gets loud. That's similar to what a long attack time will sound like on a synthesizer. And the sustain, as long as you hold the note down on your keyboard, the note will remain at that volume. And your release time is how long it takes for the note to disengage from vibrating the air molecules after you release the note. These stages are also applied to the filter. I like to use this term to describe the envelope amount on your filter is the amount of animation you're applying to your cutoff and your resonance. And the same theory applies. Another way of putting it is envelope is a way of automating the nature of your sound. Acoustic instruments have their own inherent ADSR, their own inherent envelopes. An organ without any effects has absolutely no release time. It has no decay time. It has attack and sustain. But you can create a decay with volume swells. But inherently, without a volume swell, an organ is just an attack and sustain. Whereas a piano is variable attack, decay, and release. There's no consistent sustain. I always think it's funny when people call the damper pedal the sustain pedal because it actually doesn't sustain. It just extends the decay time. It's really what it's doing. Same thing with the guitar. How you pluck the note is the attack. How long you keep the string vibrating for is the decay. There's no real sustain. It's just extending the decay. The release time is sort of like the decay after the, after the note has been disengaged. You're no longer holding the note down in any way, shape, or form or interacting with the instrument, and the release time is how long it takes for that sound to dissipate after you've let it go. So there's elements that are similar to the decay time 
and the release time, but it depends on your performance on the instrument. Playing style, um, understanding how to play staccato, which means, you know, kind of bouncy, understanding how to play legato, which means smooth and connected. It's, it's really important to be aware of these things when you're programming your sound. If you want a lush string pad that just kind of like hovers over everything in an ambient way, I like to have longer sustain times and longer release times so that when I'm changing chords, there's a little bit of uh, overlap between chords. But if I want to do some funky stabs, I don't want any release time at all. The minute I go to reach another chord, I want the sound to just drop. So the ADSR is also really important in shaping how you play the sound, not just how the sound sounds. Okay, so I've done enough yapping. Let's get right into some real-world examples. In today's episode of SAS, I'm going to use the Prophet 10 synthesizer. For each lesson, we're going to switch to the different synthesizers I have here. And if I'm messing anything up or leaving something out that's important, let's contribute to this in the comments in a positive way. Let's leave some more information. And keep me in check, too, because I'm here learning in public. I'm not coming at you like I'm a know-it-all. Believe me, I'm a perpetual student in this game of life. Okay. I recommend starting from scratch. Initialize a patch and start with the bare minimum. One oscillator. All of my amplifier envelope and filter envelope stages are all set to zero right now, including the filter. And if you notice, I'll play a sound and basically nothing's coming through. So just to be able to hear the sound of the oscillator on its own, what I like to do is turn the sustain up about halfway when I'm starting out and start working the filter. Depending on the key of the song or the octave that you want to play in, you want to tune your oscillator accordingly. I usually tune mine to around C1. That way the bass notes aren't too farty, and the, the high end isn't too piercing. Now this is just a basic saw wave right now. The saw wave is definitely the most common place to start. It has, it's, it's the most rich in harmonics. Right now, that's very clicky. Every envelope is different for every synthesizer slightly. Some of them are a little bit snappier. Some of them are a little bit laggier. There's definitely different characteristics depending on what type of synthesizer you're playing on. That's why in these SAS tutorials, I'm going to switch to different synthesizers that I have here. So we started off with about 50% on the cutoff, 50% on the sustain. Now I'm going to take the decay up a little bit. Now if you notice, as I'm turning the sustain down, you hear a rise and a fall, which will get shorter if I lower the decay. Now, if I increase the sustain, it'll have a, a baseline level to return to. But if I crank the sustain all the way up, the decay does absolutely nothing. The release does exactly that. Play the note, let go. The attack is a little, little abrupt, so I'm gonna slow the attack time a little tiny bit. Yeah, that's pretty smooth. Now I'm gonna start to shape it with the filter. Right now there's zero envelope amount, so there's no animation happening in the filter section, just in the amp section. So let's find a let's find a filter setting that we like. So we're gonna increase our envelope amount 
to about 50% so we can hear some of the animation in the envelope filter. I like to start by going to around 60-70% on your decay, about 30% or, or so on your sustain, zero release for now, and zero attack for now. Let's hear what that sounds like. Great. This is this decay is determining how 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 quickly it's gonna stay at the maximum level of cutoff. So it's a little it's a little bright. I want to keep this sound darker. So I'm gonna keep the decay at fifty percent. Notice if I have the sustain down, it rises and falls very quickly. If I want to make that snappier. I mess with the decay. Now, how about the attack? Let's give a little bit of an attack time. That way we're not hearing the, the click. That click sound you hear sometimes, that's, that's from having too little attack time. That's pretty cool. I want to keep that. I want to give it a little bit more sustain. Now, you notice I have some release on the uh, amp right here. If we match the release on our envelope filter, we can sort of have the filter match up with the, the amp. Now let's hear what the resonance does. A lot of the ear sounds you hear at the synths is the travel from the, the cutoff and the resonance points. So let's say I wanted to make this go meow. <laughs> That's my technical term, meow. Ow, ow. It's going from this point to this point. And if I want to make that a slower process, I increase the decay time. Like I said in the beginning, knowing how you're going to play the sound knowing the context of the sound in the song you're going to be using it in, this is where you want to start. Because if, if you just start tweaking knobs without really thinking about what you're doing, that can be fun too. You can discover new sounds, you can stumble on some cool things, but more often than not, you'll end up, be wa you'll end up wasting time. So I want a warm sound with some animation to it, and maybe with a few surprises thrown in. I do like that squelch, but I want to turn the resonance down a little bit. So what is the filter doing? What does a filter do in general? It removes things and allows certain things to pass and holds back other things. That's what a filter does. So a low pass filter is allowing the, low, the lower frequencies to pass through, and it's cutting out the higher frequencies. On the Prophet 10, you have your half and full setting. What that does is it allows the filter to behave more like an organic instrument. A bass uh, octave on a piano will, will naturally pump out the low frequencies, and the, the higher octaves will naturally pump out the higher frequencies. So essentially what this does is it opens up the filter on the higher octaves and closes it on the lower octaves. So if you have, on other synthesizers, it's called key amount. And that's, you know, you can, you can change the, the, the various amounts of that. So if you have no key amount or if you don't have half or full toggled on your synthesizer, the filter envelope is going to basically work the same on all the notes. If I maybe add half, it'll, it'll open up more as I go up higher. And full. I still want this to be a little bit warmer. So I'm going to turn the resonance down. I'm going to turn the cutoff down a little bit.
So that's pretty cool. I'm digging that. Maybe I'll increase the sustain. If you're going to be playing bouncy staccato patterns, you want no release time. Now, if you want to get rid of that click you hear, maybe a little tiny bit of release. And that's how sensitive envelopes can be. I'm doing major sweeps on the knobs right now, but I also encourage doing very minimal sweeps to hear all the subtle differences in the response times of the envelopes. Okay. Well, let's say I like this sound, but I want to be able to hold a chord. What am I going to do? I'm going to increase the sustain on the amplifier and a little bit more on the envelope. Let's hear what that sounds like. Brighten it up a little bit. Now, maybe I'll increase the decay time. Lovely. So let's mix in another oscillator. We're going to add in another saw wave. It's one of my preferences. I like to tune the second oscillator, usually an octave higher. Gives the sound a little bit more depth. So already you can hear now the behavior in the envelopes has changed because we've changed the source. Remember the oscillator section is the very beginning, it's the very source. The amp, the amp and the filter envelopes are this is the second stage. Now if you want more animation, you want something a little bit crazier, let's open up the resonance. Lower the cutoff a little bit. So now we have some animation from the resonance to the cutoff. How about lowering the resonance and increasing the cutoff? And then increase, and increasing the envelope amount, we'll hear even more dramatic animation. Pretty cool. I want the sound to be warm and I want it to decay naturally. So I'm going to lower the cutoff, I'm going to lower the sustain, I'm going to lower the decay time a little tiny bit, we'll see what that sounds like. Now what you can do is, even though that chord has dissipated, You can hold the chord, see what you're going to be left with afterwards. For warmer sounds, I recommend keeping the envelope amount around 50%. Hear the difference here? The envelope amount being increased, on, particularly on this synthesizer, definitely opens up the filter. Okay, I want a little bit more dynamics, so I'm going to use the key amount, or half here, on the filter. When you, when you start using key amount, I like to lower the envelope. So 
So the final touch for this sound is let's add a little bit more release, a little bit more decay. Let's see what that sounds like. Hear that bite? That's that warm sound I was looking for. Everything's trial and error. But again, I recommend knowing the keyboard part you want to play or the composition and playing that over and over again. Use that to be the guide. You don't want to be tuned to the synthesizer. You want to tune the synthesizer to you. this sound, I think I'm going to add half. So once I decided I like the sound, I save it. There it is. So in the next episode, we're going to talk more about how to manipulate the filter, and then we're going to also move on to LFO and modulation and the like. Thank you for joining me in this episode of SAS. I'll see you next time.